Um, we had also gone to the filming site for Sugar's Detrita. I suppose I said that right. Detrita <laughs> filming set because there is a whole area outside of Seoul that was built just for historical filming. And while we were there, we also saw our K drama being filmed. But I'm not supposed to tell you that. <laughs> Hey y'all, hey, guess who's back? Guess who's back? She's back, y'all. She's back, y'all. How y'all doing? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is where you are. I'm Sasha, welcome back to my channel if you are new. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back my Lord Royal. so good to see you. If you are new to the fam, welcome to the family my new Laura Royals, so good to finally meet you. <laughs> As you can see from the title, I am finally back home from South Korea and my jet lag has finally worn off. So we're going to get right into this video. If you enjoy anything related to South Korea, K-pop, or the such content, please make sure you watch the video all the way through, as I do have a pretty interesting review of what my trip was like. And if you want to go to Korea yourself, go for it. Go for it. But let's get into what my experience was like. So, to start off, I have been planning my South Korea trip for the last three years. I've been trying to go ever since my first time going back in 2019 and I finally, finally got the opportunity to go again and I just actually got back home to the U.S. Uh, Saturday, this past Saturday. I got home around 6 a.m. Long travel day, <laughs> but it was so worth it. So. The easiest thing when I got there, it was so easy because all the, the COVID restrictions have been dropped pretty much for those of us that are coming from the United States. And all I needed was a QR code and the officer did, did take notice of it. He did make sure I had it, had it, had it. And of course, you know, all my, with my passport and stuff. And it didn't take, the, the longest it took to get through customs was because there was a big group that came in ahead of us. So it took quite a while to get through with that. But other than that, getting through was a breeze and going to get my bags and all that good stuff. So, so after getting through customs and getting my luggage, I got a ride from the airport. I know some people say, oh, you can just take the train into town and it's much cheaper or the bus. Well, that's good and dandy, but that's also difficult considering I had three bag, three large suitcases with me and South Korea is nothing but hills, hills, and molehills. But anyway, fast forward, I managed to get to my first stay. I stayed in the hostel for a week. It was my first time staying in a hostel and it was fabulous. It was literally, it was just a room, but because um, I had got the room with the private bathroom, it made it that much more comfortable for me. If you wish to stay at the same place I stayed at, I highly recommend it. It is the Phil Stay uh, Myeongdong Station Hostel. I'll put a link down below. You can go and check them out. The host there is very kind and it's a very clean facility. Be prepared though, <laughs> because it is a little difficult to find if you um, are walking and looking for it, but it's on the fourth and fifth level of uh, one of the buildings. But there is an elevator that you can take to go up so you don't have to drag luggage up five, six flights of stairs. But I'll put their information in the description box down below. Anyway, so the good thing about this hostel is that it was right smack in the middle of Myeongdong. Like everything is right there. As soon as you come out, you can go left, you can go right. You're gonna be right where all the shops and everything is located. So if you wanna stay where everything is popping in one of the popping parts of the city, that's where I recommend staying and it was just absolutely fabulous. So something that I thought I would be uncomfortable about, which is moving into the next topic is, 
solo dining. I had heard before I had gone that there were a lot of places that did not allow you to dine solo. Now, I found that maybe it was just the time of day that I went, but for the most part, I was fine. I was fine. I was able to go in a lot of places. I tried my best to go into like a lot of the local, that's when people call them hole in the wall spots, meaning they're very, very, very tiny restaurants where a whole lot of people either go way later, but it's limited amount of people because how small the space is, or it's just something that it may not be a well-known place to visitors, you know, like a local spot. And the staff in there were always very nice. I would approach very cautiously because I had heard about many ordeals where uh, certain places would not allow foreigners or they just, um, you know, didn't want people that were single diners. But I would go to the door and kind of just, you know, bow a little bit and, you know, hold my finger up just to say one person and they were fine with it. And the food was absolutely delicious. Now, as far as the solo dining, I was turned away just one time and only because, and there was a sign that specified, I just didn't see the sign so I went inside, that two or more diners were required in order to dine there, which was fine by me. The lady was real sweet about it. She said, you know, sorry, gotta be two people or more, you know, obviously in Korean, but it's gotta be two people or more. And then she pointed to the sign and I read it and I said, oh, okay, all right, that's cool, you know, no big deal. But, you know, and she said, you know, you can go elsewhere and they'll, you know, take one person. And that was fine. That was literally the only time I was turned away when it came down to solo dining. But she was real nice about it. Everyone that I encountered this entire trip, everybody was kind. So then after the week was over with, I went to my actual stay, which was an Airbnb. This was also my very first time staying in an Airbnb and it was awesome. It really made me feel like I was actually still back at home in my own room in the States. And the host was absolutely the sweetest. She really was. Anytime I had a problem, if I had any issues at all, I could just message her and she would respond right away. And since I was in Korea, and she's also in Korea, it made it that much easier when it came down to staying. One of the things I liked is that where it was located, it was a quiet area. So after a certain period of time, there was no noise or anything. And because the Airbnb was back off the road, it made it so I didn't have to worry about hearing cars and honking and stuff like that. And it made it for a comfortable night's sleep. So that was my first Airbnb and first hostel. And I will definitely be doing it again. The only thing I recommend with Airbnbs is make sure that if it's somewhere that you are able to go and check them out, go check them out in person. But for the most part, go with super hosts. Super hosts are people that have hosted for a, quite a while or a decent amount of time. They've had a lot of people stay at their uh, their place. And the, usually nine times out of 10, all of the reviews are legitimate. And the reviews for where I stayed at for the Airbnb were legitimate reviews and everyone was telling the truth about the place. The pictures were exactly as they should have been and they looked exactly like where I was staying and I was happy about that. So that's as far as me getting to Korea, me as far as my stay, and as far as solo dining, just to name a couple of things. Now, as far as my activities that I did, I did a lot of tours. I did a lot of tours, thus some included um, the tours of palaces. I went to the National Museum of Korea. That was more or less like a self-guided thing, but that was fun. I took a tour in Busan. I did go to Busan. Everyone's saying you gotta see at least Busan at least some point in time. I went to Busan. That was fabulous. I did what was called the BTS fan tour. And it's a small tour, but oh my goodness, it was so much fun. I had a great time. It was 10 of us on the tour and we went to all the different sites on the tour, including seeing BCS's old big hit building, where the old dorm was, which has been converted into a, uh, this is like a cafe, cafe bakery. And it was quite an interesting thing to see. I'm glad that they did something with it. The old big hit building, <laughs> that was interesting as fans had, you know, signed all over the building. But uh, 
apparently staff that, that have the building don't like that. But we were able to see all that. And the good thing is, even though the staff that are there now that own the building don't really care for that, they were kind enough to leave all of the memorable uh, words that ARMY wrote for BTS all around the, the side of the building. So there was that. We had also gone to um, we had also gone to the filming site for Sugar's Dexita. I hope I said that right. Dexita <laughs> filming set because there is a whole area outside of Seoul that was built just for historical filming. And while we were there, we also saw our K drama being filmed. But I'm not supposed to tell you that. <laughs> But it was awesome. So that's just to name a few of the things. Oh, and the biggest thing that I got to do while I was there, and I mainly went during the June, month of June for this, was BTS's 10 year anniversary celebration. I'm sad because I got there an hour after RM had left, like he was physically there. But you know what, that's okay. I still got to go and participate in a lot of the events. I got to get some of the uh, memorabilia that was being given out to armies and I got to watch the fireworks show that they had going on at night and then after the fireworks show there was a live DJ that was playing music and remixes of different BTS songs and it was so fun just to party with so many armies of like all different age groups and everything it was so awesome and everybody was so respectful and I just had a wonderful time. I know this video is like all over the place, but there will be other individual videos dedicated to uh, each thing that I did, such as a tour or a place I went to or things like that, or I may combine them into such. But for now, just as like a little bit of a summary. Yes, there were a bunch of cute people. Yes, everybody was like coupley. No, it didn't bother me. The only thing that really got to me was probably three days before it was time for me to come home after seeing all the families and babies and stuff. All it did was just make me miss my own family back home in the States. So I was there the entire month of June. It was fabulous. I did a lot. Do I want to go back? Yes. Am I going back? Yes. When am I going back? I don't know. <laughs> but I do know I am going back to Korea. So I do apologize that this was all over the place. I will try my best to chapter it out for you to make it easier if I can. But <laughs> other than that, if you are looking into going to South Korea, definitely go. Still do your research to see what you might have, want to have an idea of what you want to do, where you want to stay. All I can say is buy that plane ticket and hop across the Pacific Ocean over to South Korea. <sighs> It is definitely worth it. And I have definitely had my reset and I'm good and golden and dandy. I hope you like this. I hope that it wasn't too all over the place. If you enjoy content about Korea, aviation, or just chatting about any and everything, please give me a subscribe, hit that thumbs up button, and please go ahead and share this video with others that either want to go to Korea, have been to Korea, or you just want to share it with them, just share it. I would highly appreciate it. Let me know down in the comments down below. What do you want to hear first? Things I like about Korea? Things I don't like about Korea? Things that I did while I was in Korea? We're going to go down the line from there. <laughs> but that is all. I will see you all in the next video.